morning class. Can you please stand up and let's have a short prayer. Let's bow our heads and feel the presence of the Lord. Father God, come be with us today. Fill our hearts with joy. Fill our minds with learning. Fill our classroom with peace. Fill our friendship with kindness. Fill our lessons with fun. And fill our school with love. Amen. Okay, class, good morning again. Can we also greet our professors, Mrs. Eloisa M. Bayangos, Mr. Danny Franchado, and our Dean of College of Education, Mrs. Lourdes Tejada. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Okay, so class, how's your day so far? Wow, that's good to hear. So can I expect a full blast of energy and active participation from all of you? Okay, so anyway, before you sit down, kindly look around and pick up all the pieces of trash and check the alignment of your chairs. May I ask the secretary of this class if we have absentees for this day? Yes? Okay, thank you, Mr. De La Cruz. So before we proceed to our new lesson, let's have first a recap of what we've discussed last meeting. So, anyone who wants to share? Oh, yes, Mr. Asimo. Okay, thank you so much. How about you, Mr. Fabi? Okay, thank you. So, now, let's have first a four-minute small group activity. Okay? <clears throat> so, I will divide you into two groups. Boys versus girls. So, each team will have a five representatives. And this game or this activity has two rounds. Each round will have a two minutes allotted time. And then I will go into relay a message to the student in front. Then the student in front will pass the message correctly with your group mates. Then the student at the back will write, I will come in front here and write the sentences or write the message on the paper and post it on our board. Okay, and then the game continues. The group who will get the correct sentences or the correct message will be the winner and receive a small prize from me after the discussion. Okay, so is it clear? Okay, so what are we waiting for? Let's start now. Okay, so for round one. Okay. Your two minutes starts now okay for the second round your two minutes starts now Whoa, okay, so let's check if you got all the correct sentences or the message. So for the first sentence or first message, the correct answer is, Lester said, I will finish my assignment. So in team B, okay, you've got the correct answer. How about in team G? Okay, you've got also the correct answer. How about in the second sentence? Let's check. So in the second uh, sentence, Lester said that he would finish his assignments. So in team B, okay, you've got the correct answer. How about in the team G? Oh, you used the word will instead of would. Okay, so congratulations, Team B. You've got all the correct sentences. So don't forget to submit your one for sheet of paper containing your names and then give it to me. I will give you the small prize, okay? So now let's, <clears throat> uh, let's analyze or identify uh, the sentences on the board. So what do you observe with these two sentences? 
Anyone? Yes, Miss Gando. Okay, thank you. That's a, that is a good observation. Let's have another one. Yes, Miss Trinidad. Yes. In the first sentence, it used quotation marks. How about in the second sentence? Oh, yes, Miss Rainsell. Okay, yes, correct. In the second sentence, we use uh, the word that. Okay, so it seems that you have an idea of what, of what our topic for today is. Huh? Okay, so our topic for today or our lesson for today is direct speech and indirect speech okay okay so our topic is direct speech and indirect speech so what is direct and indirect speech do you have an idea okay so let's we're going to discuss it so our objectives for this lesson is first um, define or distinguish the difference between the direct speech and indirect speech the second one is to recognize all the tenses that is going to use in changing or in converting direct speech into indirect speech and then the third um, objective is for you to use direct speech and indirect speech appropriately in varied context okay is it clear to you okay so let's start <clears throat> okay so let's start with the direct speech Okay, so direct speech, the actual words without change of speaker are quoted. The actual words of the speaker are enclosed with quotation marks. So in the direct speech, um, it also uses the comma or a colon after the word said to introduce the spoken words. <clears throat> so for example, he said, I am going to school. So as you can see, they used a quotation marks for the spoken words. How about the indirect speech? Okay, so for indirect speech, the actual words of the speaker are changed. The pronouns of the sentence are also changed. The words of the speaker are not enclosed in quotation marks. The word that will be used before the spoken words of the speaker. So the reason for the changes in um, actual words in this indirect speech is because um, the actual words or the spoken words speak uh, what's, what's been spoken by the speaker in the past. Hence narrating it to the present. So it really requires to change in the tense of the actual words okay so aside from that um, additional uh, information <coughs> excuse me so an uh, additional information the English language has two ways to narrate the spoken words of a person and that two ways is what we call the direct speech and indirect speech these two ways is usually used to convey a message from one person to another person. And direct speech and indirect speech are also called direct and indirect um, narrations. Okay? So, <clears throat> are, you, uh, are you cleared with or are, did you understand the di difference with the direct speech and indirect speech? Okay? So... If that's the case, then let's proceed. So before we learn uh, the basic rules in converting direct speech into indirect speech, let's have first know the two components of a sentence in a direct speech. So the first one, the first one is the reporting verb. So reporting verb 
are the verb of the first sentence. Like, she said, she says, they say, and etc. So, here is an example. She said, I am listening to music. You, the next one is, you will say, I need your help. So, the word said and the word say is the reporting verb we're talking about. Okay? So, next is reported speech. So, this is the second component of a sentence in a direct speech. Reported speech, it is the second sentence or the actual words of the speaker that is enclosed in quotation mark. It is called a reported speech. So, example, he said, I got a job in college. So, the reported speech is, I got a job in college. The next uh, example she says, I want to become a doctor. So the reported speech is, I want to become a doctor. So is it clear? Do you have any questions? Okay, none. So let's proceed to the basic rules. Okay, so let's proceed to the basic rules of indirect speech. So rule number one, words of the speaker, reported speech, are not enclosed in quotation marks. So just like we've said earlier, so in the indirect speech, it does not enclose in quotation marks. So it doesn't use any quotation marks in this sentence. Rule number two, usage of word that is always used between reporting verb and reported speech. So, here is an example. So, here is an example. Okay. Okay, so example. The direct speech is, he said, I write a letter. If we're going to change it into indirect speech, it will become he said that he wrote a letter. So we use that to introduce the spoken word. Okay? Next, let's proceed to rule number three. So rule number three, change in tense of the reported speech if the uh, reporting verb of the direct speech is either present or future tense, no change will be made in the reported speech for making. Okay, so here is the continu continuation. Okay, so again in rule number three, change in tense of the reported speech. If the reported 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 verb sorry reporting verb of the direct speech is either present or future tense, no change will be made in the reported speech for making indirect speech. Only if the reporting verb of the direct speech belongs to the past tense, changes will be made in tense of reported speech for making indirect speech. So let's have an example. example in the direct speech she said I am watching a movie so if we're going to convert it into indirect speech it becomes she said that she was watching a movie so as you can see okay so as you can see there is a change here. So the past, uh, the direct speech is in a past tense. So in the di indirect speech, it begins also a past tense. So next, ha next example. Okay.
So next example, he says I am playing cricket. So in indirect speech, he says that he is playing cricket. So the direct speech in is, of, is in the present tense. So the, in the, the indirect speech is also in the present tense. Okay, so rule number four, changes in pronoun. The pronoun of subject of the reported speech is sometimes changed according to the pronoun or subject or object of the reported, reporting verb. The possessive pronouns like his, her, my, their, your, etc. may also change according to subject or object of the first sentence. So, example. Okay, so example, the direct speech, she said to me, I like your book. Then if we're going to change it into indirect speech, it becomes, she said to me that she liked my book. So, what is the um, pronoun here in the direct speech? So, we have here the, ito, your in indirect speech, it becomes my book. Okay? What else? I. In indirect speech, it becomes she. So, the pronouns will change when it comes to indirect speech. Okay? So, another example. So, I have here another example. Okay, wait. So another example, uh, in the direct speech, he said, I eat two apples. In indirect speech, he said that he ate two apples. So what is the pronoun? The pronoun I in the direct speech becomes he in the indirect speech. How does it happen? Because the according to the rule number four, the pronoun can be changed according to the pronoun or subject or object of the reporting verb and it is the reporting verb ito yung reporting verb natin so since the reporting verb is he or it pertains to a boy then in the indirect speech the i becomes he because he is pertaining to the subject or the uh, pronoun in the direct speech Okay, is it clear to you? Okay, so rule number five, change in time. If there is time being mentioned in a sentence of the direct speech, the time will be changed in indirect speech. So we have a certain rules with this um, changing time in indirect speech. If there is a mention now, if the word now is being mentioned in the indirect speech, it becomes a uh, then. And if, it, if there is tomorrow in direct speech, it becomes uh, the next day, okay? So there will be a difference or there will be a changes in time. So, for example, let's have an example. Okay, so example, he said, I need you now. So the uh, time here in the direct speech is now. So if it if it is converted into indirect speech, it begins. He said that he needed my help then. So the na the word now begins then in the indirect speech. Another example. Okay, so another example. She said, in the direct speech, she said, I am buying a laptop today. So, Miss Rasimo, can you please tell me what is the time in this direct speech? Yes, the word today. 
So, if we're going to convert it into indirect speech, what is the time now? So, the answer is... Okay, so if this will be in indirect speech, it becomes she said that she was buying a laptop that day. So the word today in the in, di in the direct speech became that day in the indirect speech. Okay, are we clear with these rules? Are we clear with the rule number one up to rule number five? Okay, so do you have any question? It is feel free you're free to ask questions for clarification. You can tell me if you have any questions regarding with our lesson discussion. None? Are you sure you don't have any questions? Okay, so since we don't you don't have any questions Kindly get the copy of the Tale of the Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. So last time I've already sent you the file, so you're going you're just going to print it out. So I expect that you have already a copy in your hands. Okay, so I have also here the uh, pop-up storybook of the, the Tale of the Peter Rabbit. So let me read it to you. Okay? The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Okay. Now, my dear, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into MacGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mr. MacGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella, umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. But Peter, Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. Mockregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuces and some French beans and then he ate some radishes. And then feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom she would, whom she, she meet but Mr. MacGregor. Mr. MacGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake, calling out, Stop, thief! Next. Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself and shed a big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind. And rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in, if it had not had so much uh, water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each presently Peter's need, curly shoe. Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. 
and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not to the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very dumb with sitting in that pen. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found the door in the wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then, the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bonnie. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hole. Screech, scratch, screech. Peter scattered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some blood current bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped under underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big pear tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice stuff and soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his coat. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during this evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at a bed at a time. And that's the end of the story. So, The Tale of Peter Rabbit is a example of a classic children's book published in 1901 and the author of this uh, story is Patrick Potter. So, I have here a uh, two direct speech from the story. So I want or I need two volunteer to convert this direct speech into indirect speech. Okay? Anyone who wants to answer, you're just going to convert this direct speech into indirect speech. Okay, so for the number one, yes, Mr. Manansala, the number one is Mrs. Rabbit said, You may go into fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. So, can you tell me what is the indirect speech of this sentence? Okay, let's see if you've got the correct answer. The correct answer is. Mrs. Rabbit said they may go into fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. So, congratulations, you've got the correct answer. How about in number two? Yes, Miss Columna. So, in number two, some friendly sparrow said, 
you can get out of that net. So what is the indirect speech of this sentence? Okay, so let's see if you've got the correct answer. Okay, so the correct answer is some friendly sparrow said that he can get out of the net. So congratulations, you also got the correct answer. So it seems that you really understand, as in 100% understand our lesson for today, right? Okay, so let's have um, another activity. So let's have another activity. But this time, I will divide you into five groups. Okay, so this will be the group one. This will be the group two, three, four, and the rest is group five. So each group will make a five a direct speech. Make five direct speech and then change it to indirect speech. So I'll give you three minutes. I'll give you three minutes to do your task. Write your answers in a manila paper and be guided with this criteria. Okay, let me review our criteria for this group activity. Okay. So, our criteria. First is relevance to the topic. The group clearly explains and performs their task. If you... Uh, do this criteria, you're gaining 10 points. Next is in cooperation. The group members cooperate to the task and shows unity. Five for five points. And then for another five points, time management. Finish the given task at exact time given. So I give you three minutes to do your task. So the total of, of the points is 20 points. Okay, so don't forget to uh, write your names on the one for sheet of paper and then pass it to me, okay? Now let's start. You may now start your group work activity. Okay, time's up. Please mount your works on the board. Okay? And choose one checker of each group come here in front okay now i want you to step or or i want you to move one step at your left except for you group five because you're going to check the group one's uh work so come here so where is your one for sheet of paper okay so give it to the checker of your uh of your group work Okay, you've already have the one for sheet of paper. Okay, then kindly check if you, if your uh, classmates have the correct uh, conversion of direct speech and indirect speech. Okay. Go pass your one for sheet of paper. Okay, so let me tell you. Let me tell you they are group scores. Okay. So for group one, you've got 19 points. Congratulations. Let's give them a round of applause. Now for group two, you've got 17 points. Congratulations. Please give, give them also a round of applause. For group three, You've got 20 points. Congratulations. Please give them a round of applause. And then for group 4, you have 15 points. That's very good. Then in group 5, you have 20 points. So congratulations everyone. Please give yourself a, round, a big, big, big round of applause because you're doing great. Okay? So for uh, developing your mastery, because we've already discussed the indirect speech and direct speech. So um, since we already discussed the indirect speech and direct speech, Mr. Rioso, yeah. So Mr. Rioso, what 
can you um what uh what are your learnings with our indirect speech and direct speech lesson can you please share it to us okay thank you so much okay so to develop your mastery i'm going to dictate five sentences and you're gonna tell me if it is direct speech or indirect speech okay are you ready oh let's start number one mang Cesar visited the coffee plantation selmo said is it direct speech or indirect speech yes it is direct speech number two selmo stated that he is in charge of the farming mindoro it is indirect speech or direct speech yes correct it is indirect speech number three he lived in Mansalai. the boy mentioned is it direct speech or indirect speech oh it is an in it is a direct speech speech rather it is a direct speech rather number four he planted rice in our land said crispin it is direct speech or indirect speech yes very good it is direct speech number five crispin said that he already fed the dog is it direct speech or indirect speech yes it is indirect speech okay very good class it's it seems that you really understand our lesson and you're ready for a short quiz am i right okay so kindly get a one half sheet of paper and let's have a short quiz okay the direction listen to the following sentences carefully write is if it is a direct indirect speech and if it's not change the sentence to make it indirect speech okay does the direction clear to you okay let's start <clears throat> excuse me number one i'm going to read it twice so listen carefully guys okay number one paul came in and said i'm really hungry paul came in and said i'm really hungry number two he said he had a new car he said he had a new car number three i'm seeing my brother tomorrow she said I'm seeing my brother tomorrow, she said. Number four, we're quite cold in here. We're quite cold in here. Number five, the local MP said that they have a plan to make the city a safer place to everyone. The local MP said that they have a plan to make the city a safer place for everyone. Number six, Mr. David said, I want to meet your parents. Mr. David said, I want to meet your parents. Number seven, Mr. John said that he had bought a book for me. Mr. John said that he had bought a book for me. Number eight, he said, I am going to school. He said, I am going to school. Number nine, he said that he wrote a letter. He said that he wrote a letter. Okay, for the last number, number 10, she said to me that she liked my book. She said to me that she liked my book. Okay, finish. Oh, let's exchange paper with your seatmates. Let's check your answers. Okay, so number one, since, since it is a direct speech, you're going to change it to, Paul came in and said that he is really hungry. Paul came in and said that he is really hungry. Okay, for number two, since it's already in direct speech, the answer is IS. Number three, since it's already I is again a direct speech, you're going to change it. So it should be she said that she was seeing her brother the next day. She said that she was seeing her brother the next day. Number four, it should be they say that they're cold. They say that they're cold. Number five, since it is already an indirect speech, you don't have to change it at all. So number five, the answer is is number six it should be mr david said that he wanted to meet my parents mr david said that he wanted to meet my parents number seven it is is indirect speech okay number eight it should be he said that he was going to school he said that he was going to school number nine and number ten are both indirect speech so the answer is I S okay so count your scores count your scores tell me who's got 10 who
buka ten. Okay. How about nine? Who got nine? Okay. Eight. Who got eight? None? Lower than eight. Okay. It seems that you really understand our lesson. I'm grateful to that. So, before I dismiss this class, let's have first our homework. Let's not, don't forget our homework. Okay. So, your homework is construct five direct speech, then convert it to indirect speech, and underline the changes occurred, write it on a half sheet of paper. So, this is your homework. So, you're going to pass it tomorrow in our class again. So, that's all for today. Thank you for participating in our class. Thank you, Mom and Sir, for uh, staying with us until the end of this discussion, okay? Thank you so much and goodbye, class.